Hello YouTube, today we are going to talk about my 3D printer again. Uh, in particular we're going to talk about the control box that I have made for it. Now this control box contains um, a, a mini PC uh, based on a micro ITX power supply um, running Linux CNC and uh, some semi-industrial um, Stefan motor controllers and uh, a, a DC servo motor controller uh, that you've seen in my uh, previous extruder video. So uh, let's take the cover off and uh, I'll give you a look. If I can take the cover off. So this thing is based on a um, an external tape drive chassis for a uh, for a computer. So it's it's been a bit hacked about to get everything to fit into it. Okay, there we go. So while we're on the back, we have um, the main power plug, power switch, um, a switch for the PC, uh, the connector that has all the uh, all the power signals for the step motors, an Ethernet connector, um, and a couple of connectors for um, the encoder feedback and a serial output. So on the top, we have. Let's zoom in a bit. We have a 24 volt switch mode power supply here. Um, these are the step motor drivers and this is the DC uh, servo motor driver. Um, here we have a parallel uh, breakout board. If we turn it like that you can see so uh, yeah parallel connection in there and then it just uh, splits out into all the, uh, all the different inputs and outputs. Um, here we have uh, the uh, MicroITX uh, motherboard. Um, yeah, fairly standard in, in the bottom there somewhere, there's the uh, hard drive, it's a little uh, solid state hard drive. Um, and somewhere in here, yes, there's a laptop power supply there to power the, uh, power the computer parts of it. I found it was uh, a bit unstable when I was just powering everything off the one uh, power supply. Um, uh, all, these, all these motory parts uh, have some, some quite high current uh, demands and it was uh, it was making the machine crash so it's been a lot more stable since I saw that second power supply. Uh, so yeah you uh, you can probably see uh, some of it's nice and neat and some bits of it are horribly messy like all this stuff under here. So uh, yeah I had I had some good ideas when I uh, when I started building this and uh, as as always happens with with projects uh, some ideas work out and some ideas don't and you have to kind of hack things around to make uh, make everything work. Um, so I had a lot of problems with RFI. These uh, these motor controllers um, they output a, a ton of RFI, and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it about it because a lot of it is actually on these uh, these power lines that go to the stepper motors because um, it's all PWM controlled. So there's lots of nasty transients and things. Um, there's quite a bit coming back down the uh, the power cables as well. So they uh, they they all go out in a kind of a star fashion to the. The, uh, the power supply uh, terminals. Um, this kind of construction where, where you have the, uh, the, all the noisy signals coming in from one, one direction and all your uh, signal signals going from the other direction is absolutely critical. Um, if, if anyone out there is doing something like this, do not cross any of these over. There. These are actually just power lines and even this, even this routing here is suboptimal but there is another way to do it. Um, so yeah, in fact, ideally these controllers, um, they take differential inputs, opto-isolated differential inputs, and uh, really seriously consider using that if you're doing anything along these lines. Um, it will help. This I unfortunately can't hear because this isn't a differential. It doesn't have a differential out, but it's just single inputs. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of uh, rubbish. But uh, yeah, yeah, seriously, differential signaling is here for a reason on these things and it does help and it is needed particularly in the encoder lines if you have have any kind of uh, servo motor with with like an optical encoder on the back of it be very very careful uh, uh, routing routing the lines from that and use shielded cables um, I have actually use a shielded cable here um, in fact ideally use shielded cables for all the signaling because these things are just just impossible to control the RFI, RFI otherwise uh, yeah, some other problems I had. Um, so this this DC servo motor controller um, made by Leadshine. Um, so uh, I, I got it and uh, I, I looked. Well, first of all, I looked at the, the software offering and it said, "Oh yeah, all tunable and you can tune it to your motor." Yeah, yeah, all well and good. So I got it and I got a motor, and then I discovered that actually. In order to to tune um, the, uh, the the algorithms in this to your motor, 
um, uh, uh, there, there are various different parameters you need to tune. There's kind of position tuning and current mode tuning. And the, the critical bit in the software that you need to tune this to to a, uh, a motor is password protected. And so it, you don't actually need to use that, that function if you are using a lead shine server motor. But I wasn't. I was using one made by someone else. And uh, yeah, the, the, the function in the software it's, it's free software, you can download it from their website, but this particular function that tunes it to third-party motors is password protected. Um, so I emailed LeadShine uh, asking them for this password, and uh, they completely ignored me. Not, not, they didn't even ask for money. Uh, they just completely ignored my request. So, um, yeah, that's a bit rubbish, I thought. So, yeah, never use LeadShine if you want to uh, uh, drive a, uh, a, a, a server motor that wasn't made by them. Um, because yeah, you'll have problems. Um, I've just about got it to work, um, but it's it's distinctly suboptimal. There's kind of nasty hissing coming from the motor, and it's probably going to shorten its life somewhat. But uh, I'm, I'm just going to have to live with that for now until I can come up with a, uh, a better solution. Um, it was actually quite hard finding a suitable motor for the uh, for the extruder um, because I wanted a I wanted a, an actual DC server motor with a with a gear box on the end of it to reduce the weight um, and finding a, uh, a uh, one with a, a high enough ratio on the uh, on the gear head was actually uh, was actually quite a challenge so uh, um, yeah I, for all I know they didn't even do a, a motor that would have suited my needs but so yeah anyway that kind of sucked um, these these two uh, stepper drivers they're also lead shine fortunately however they have an auto tune function that doesn't require software you, you just flip uh, the uh, I think it's either four or five. You, you flip one of these dip switches a couple of times, and it will actually auto tune and do a fairly good job of auto tuning itself to a, uh, a stepper motor. But uh, of course, there's there's no feedback from the stepper motors. It, it's basing everything on the current draw and, and reverse EMF and things. But uh, yeah, they they do a fair enough job actually. I don't really have any complaints with them. And uh, uh, this driver is is actually it's not Lead Shine. It's some UK company. Yeah, it's it's, it's fine. Um, so uh, yeah, there we go. Um, the PC, as I said, is running Linux CNC. Um, it's it's based the, the the motherboard is based on Atom D two seven hundred or something like that. I think um, it's one of these old Intel ones with an awful awful Power VR um, graphics chip in it. Um, so what I'm doing actually is I'm VNCing to this this PC with uh, a Turbo VNC. I have also I've disabled hyper threading. I've enabled the uh, the ISOL CPUs uh, command line on Grub. Um, actually, now I get very good uh, jitter and, uh, and latency figures, even running over VNC. So um, the fact that uh, the, the processor has an awful graphics chip with no drivers for anything apart from 32-bit Windows XP um, really doesn't matter so much, um, fortunately. Um, and it's it's quite a nice solution actually because it it means you don't have to have an extra computer monitor just for your 3D printer. Um, so I can I can VNC into this from wherever, from my laptop. It doesn't matter if the VNC connection drops, Linux CNC is gonna keep running because it's running locally and, and doing its own kind of software rendering. Um, so yeah, I can just kind of set it going and uh, and, and disconnect or, or, or leave it or switch my main computer off or whatever and it'll just keep printing. Um, so yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a nice feature. Uh, so yeah, I hope this has been um, somewhat uh, uh, instructional and helpful for uh, uh, for someone out there. Um, uh, soon there'll be some uh, more videos when I get it working about the actual 3D printer printing something, finally, after about seven years of building it. Um, actually, that's not true. It has printed things before, but uh, not very good quality. So yeah, there we go. hope you enjoyed it. Come again.